Hi everyone and welcome to Sacred Geometry, Language of the Universe. My name is Seth and I'm here to share Sacred Geometry with the whole world. First, I want to thank all of you for your subscriptions, for your likes, for your comments. It means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate the support. I have not posted a video in a while because I was going through some stuff in my private life, but I don't want to give up on this channel. I have a lot of passion for sacred geometry and I want to keep sharing this knowledge and this art with all of you. So I'm going to do my best to make more videos. Also, these videos take a lot of work because there's animation involved in them, but I want to deliver to you guys something that's entertaining, informative and useful at the same time. Now, before I move on, I want to remind everyone that the information that I do share in this channel is esoteric in nature. So please feel free to do your own research and use your discernment. And if you don't think it resonates with you, it's okay, you can leave it. Sacred geometry is supposed to be something fun. I know because it has the word geometry in it, it sounds scientific, but it's also art. And that's why I love it so much because there's this interest in merge of art and science together. Okay, so let's get right to today's subject. Today I want to introduce five unique shapes that emerge from Metatron's cube. And by the way, feel free to check my episode about Metatron's cube. I talk about how the form came to be and all you need to know about Metatron's cube. These five unique shapes have intrigued and have been studied by many mathematicians for thousands of years. They have been named after the great philosopher Plato, and they are called the Platonic Solids. Plato have studied and wrote about the Platonic Solids in his dialogue Timaeus, I hope I'm saying it right, 360 BC. However, some other sources credit the discovery of the Platonic Solids to Pythagoras, 518 BC. It is said that Pythagoras had discovered three of the Platonic solids, which are the cube, the tetrahedron, and the dodecahedron. Then Plato came in and discovered the octahedron and the icosahedron, which gives a total of five Platonic solids. So where did this platonic solids came from? What are they and what's their origin? It is said that these unique shapes can be traced all the way back to ancient Egypt. There has been records that Pythagoras in 535 BC have left to study in Egypt in various temples with the Egyptian priests. During his stay in Egypt, he has learned a lot of ancient knowledge and the platonic solids could have been part of that knowledge, which he brought back to Greece. The Platonic solids were also revisited by Johann Kepler. Johann Kepler discovered that the ratio of the orbits of the planets known in his days, which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, six planets, were the same as the ratio between nested Platonic solids. Kepler was quite fascinated by this discovery and decided to call it the Mysterium Cosmographicum. And I'm sure many of you have seen these awesome illustrations before on the internet, which are a representation of the Mysterium Cosmographicum. So let me introduce you the five Platonic solids and what they're all about. The Platonic solids represents the five elements, which are the building blocks of the universe. Fire, water, earth, air, and the fifth one being the universe, or ether, or prana, whatever you want to call it. Now, each of these elements have unique criteria. They're created with the same edge length, the same one face, same size of the same face, the same angle, and all the points or vertices of each shape fits perfectly inside a sphere. 
These are apparently the only shapes known to us up till now that fits these criteria, which is a great representation of perfect balance and harmony. So let me discuss each platonic solid in detail and let's dive a little deeper so we can understand more. We're going to start with the tetrahedron. Tetra meaning there are four faces and four equilateral triangles. The second one will be the cube or hexahedron. Hexa meaning there are six identical faces or six identical squares. The third one is the octahedron. Octa meaning there are eight faces, eight equilateral triangles. The fourth one is the dodecahedron. Dodeca means there are 12 faces, 12 identical pentagons. And the fifth one, the icosahedron, meaning there are 20 faces, 20 equilateral triangles. So the tetrahedron represents fire, the hexahedron or cube represents earth, the octahedron represents air, the icosahedron represents water, and the dodecahedron represents ether or the universe or prana. And you may have noticed that four of these elements are associated with our zodiac signs. Air, water, fire, and earth. And this shows that everything is connected in the universe. Each zodiac sign is associated with an element. So now that I have introduced the platonic solids and what do they represent for us, let me show you their relationship with Metatron's cube. As you can see here, if we take Metatron's cube, which I mentioned in my previous video, we can find all of the platonic solids embedded within Metatron's cube. So we can find the tetrahedron, we can find the cube or the hexahedron, and here if we delete some lines we find the octahedron, and here the icosahedron, and finally the dodecahedron. Now each platonic solid, as you can see here, can be found twice inside Metatron's cube. For the tetrahedron, it's reversed, so you get two tetrahedrons that are opposite of each other, which gives this beautiful Merkaba shape, which I'm going to talk about in another episode. For the cube, there's two cubes, a big one and a small one, as you can see here. The same for the octahedron, there's a big one and a small one. The same thing for the icosahedron, there's a big one and a small one. However, for the dodecahedron, you can find two similar dodecahedrons but one that can be viewed from the top perspective, as you can see here, and another one that can be viewed from the bottom perspective. And as you can see here, the dodecahedron can be found only inside Metatron's cube. It's not touching the outer perimeter lines, like the other platonic solids. This to me means that this element, the dodecahedron, which is a representation of the universe, confirms that it encompasses all of the other elements, all of the other four elements. Hence why when we find it inside Metatron's cube, 
it's slightly different than the other elements. Again, this is just my opinion, but feel free to share with me your opinion about what do you think about the dodecahedron and its relationship to the other platonic solids. So after I explain the relationship between the platonic solids and Metatron's cube, this means that Metatron's cube gave a solid foundation for the universe to be created. If the five platonic solids are the building blocks of the universe, then Metatron's cube is the foundation. And this is again my theory, but I like to connect the dots and see what I can make out of it. Also, the platonic solids that I introduced in this episode are represented in a two-dimensional format, similarly to Metatron's cube, but in another episode, I will show you how these forms look in three dimensions. And that will be very fun because they look quite different than the two-dimensional representation. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of this episode that these platonic solids were discovered by Pythagoras, who have probably learned about them from Egypt. But I'm going to share with you another discovery that shows that they might date back from way before then. The author Keith Critchlaw, in his book Time Stands Still, shows that the platonic solids were known to the Neolithic people of Britain at 1000 years before Plato. As you can see here in the photo, these are clearly artifacts that represent the platonic solids. These beautiful artifacts are kept now in the Ashmolean Museum of Oxford. Now this is just to show that these forms, the platonic solids, which are related to Metatron's cube, which is sacred geometry, this is sacred knowledge that have been known for thousands of years. This is not something new. And studying these shapes, meditating on them, can unlock our consciousness. I know I do say this in every episode, but I want it to be a reminder for everyone. Surround yourself in your life with sacred geometry, with the flower of life, with Metatron's cube, with the platonic solids. The more you observe them, the more you can find something new that can help you with your life. And in the next video, I'm going to do a recap of what I have been talking about since the Vesica Pisces, since the creation of it all, of the universe, up till the platonic solids. And that can give us a perspective of how sacred geometry is related to everything. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your subscriptions, your likes, your support. Please don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about the platonic solids? Have you studied them? What do you know about them? Let's talk about it. And I wish you an amazing time wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace. When we talk about the Metatron's cube, it is a device, it is an instrument that allows you